You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, Square Pit Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Now, I know I've said that uh, 500 times before, but this time I mean it. I really mean it this time. We got a special guest, but first and foremost, Harry, what's popping? Uh, you know me, Dante. I'm trying to keep these gators down. Having a tough Difficult. time doing it during election Difficult. season. It's very tough, very it difficult is. keeping the gators down. <laughs> Stop the count. <laughs> Stop the count. I've just been doing that all the last couple of days. We're recording this on the day that uh like three days after election day, so we still don't know who technically won, even though it's Biden, but all yeah. day long I've just been going, Stop the count. We got let me let me introduce my guest and get her in this because uh here's a here's a gonna, let me let me give my heart one. Well, like I've Saw her around. We talked a few times in passing. Then we met. And then every time I see her, I get this kind of like, you know, you know what I talk about, Harry. I tell about that. I get nice, that thing warm in my feeling. You're yeah, happy like, to see somebody. Uh, you know, I, I, mm, I get her. I get her. But and so we, I feel like we did a couple, we did a po couple podcasts, and I think we're getting closer. And I really wanted to have, but I've been asking her. First of all. Give it up for Dulce Sloan, yo. Give it up for Dulce Sloan. Thank hey. you. Thanks Hello, for coming. Friends. So I, I I get this I I get this warm thing when I see her. She's just a sweetie, and I, and I wanted her on. We have been talking about this for months because I I remember I, I told Harry about it, and I and I'm just happy that we finally got to do it. I did it. I'm here. You did it. You. We did out it. here. We in here. We're always we in, home. We in the building. We in um, the building. You in the parking lot. Oh, what a fun <laughs> sentence. <laughs> so, um, I'm so happy to have you on. Um, uh, Dulce's funny as shit. Um, and she don't give a fuck. Thank you. And Not what is, usually. No, <laughs> you don't give, you she has zero fucks to when give. When do you give a fuck, Dulce? Oh, when my mama's involved. <laughs> um, if you say funky, something funky to one of my friends. Um, usually when you should give a fuck. You know, that's when someone's like out the side of their neck where you're like, hey, man, that's my mom. They'll never find you. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> things like that. It's it's usually when I, but other than that, it's like everybody's been so stressed out about this election and all these, you know, white people carrying on and people being so upset and stressing their dogs out. And I was doing an interview and they were like, so, you know, how you feel about the outcome, whether the outcome of the election could be and this, that, and the third, and I was like, they were doing an interview for like Entertainment Weekly, and I was like, yo, honestly, no matter who's president, the cops are still gonna keep shooting black people. So something that I have echoed every show, I think, Harry. I think mm. I say that every every show. <laughs> every it show. Matter. It's like I want to, like I can't. As yes, I'm concerned, but it's like at the same time, I'm never gonna. It's, the probability of meeting the president of the United States is quite low at this point in my life. The probability of seeing a cop is what? Not if I step outside my house. That's gonna happen. Yeah. It's gonna happen. They just they just drive they just drive by here. 
because they drive by everywhere because cops are yeah. fucking everywhere. So right. I've way more, uh, there's more likelihood I will run into a police officer than I will the president of the United States. Right. So well, not to say what he does isn't important, but we put so much weight on who the president is. When really, we should put way more weight on who our senators and who our reps are in the House of Representatives. Yeah. Those are actually the people that write and pass laws. Yeah. So we're so pressed about the president, but he'll sign off on stuff. He can veto it. Yeah, but it's it's funny to watch, uh, especially white people freak out, especially during the last election or during the last couple of years. Like, this is the worst it's ever been. This is the yeah. worst. And For y'all. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Y'all say it's the worst we've ever been. Like Clayton English, we were talking one day. He's like, I can never go back in time. Because every day forward is the best it's been for black people. Yeah, it's bad. I say that all the time. I said it's better now than it's ever been. It's better today. Yeah. The day that George Floyd got k- killed, it was better than the day before. And that's crazy to think that because of the fact that the that's progress just of how bad it's been. Not not right, because it's at, great, but because of how terrible, oh, how much it worse it's sucks. been historically. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying it don't suck. I'm just saying... As uh, in reference to what it was before, this is the best day in race. And the fact that we finally have uh, consequences and not a lot, but at least we're getting caught. Con- and that's where the, that's how the culture changes. The culture changes because there's consequences and then the consequences lead to the fear of those consequences. And then the culture starts to change. Right. You know, it's. um. So it's better. It's the what still sucks, but it's better than it's ever been. So, I mean, I, I can go in any bathroom I want. I can go to college. I don't need a man to co-sign me getting a bank account. Um, I got this apartment by myself. Like, there's so many things that are different. Right. There's so many things that are better just as a woman and as a black person. Yeah. So, you know, when I look at, and the, the crazy f- thing is, like, if this pandemic. If we hadn't have been in a pandemic, all those they wouldn't people have wouldn't have it. marched for George Floyd. They wouldn't have seen it. They wouldn't have seen that. They Everybody was home it. watching it. Everybody That's was home watching it. Was. They marched all over the world because of George Floyd. Yeah. And Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor. People marched in. People marched in Ghana. People marched in Tokyo and yeah, Turkey yeah. and England and Australia. Because everybody was sitting home watching it. Now, what's crazy is that I I was just talking to somebody about this today, and I was like. Do you, you you don't remember Amadou Diallo got shot 41 shots? I remember him. 41 shots. That was him. in the 90s. That was. Yep. And that man was literally doing nothing. Nothing. He was whole. They told him to put his hands up. He had a wallet in his hand and they shot him because he had a wallet in his hand. 41 yes. shots. He was hit by 41 shots. They shot more than 41 times. Which is crazy because if you're a police officer that can't distinguish between a wallet or a gun, you don't you need to You probably shouldn't be a... Uh, uh, but what gun know, do you notice in the shape of a square? I And it, we, were, we were talking about the, you know, the, everybody was talking about the, what about the violence that they think is going to happen if Trump doesn't win? And I and I said this, I, was, I always say this to you, Harry, I go, don't nobody really want that smoke. Like everybody want that smoke when you could when you could when you can bully somebody or when you got the numbers or when it don't it don't cost you nothing. But time and time we've seen you've seen these you've seen a lot of these Karens go um, n- nigger 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 and then she then she the 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 the, the the community board kicks her off. She loses her job. She this. She's a pariah in the neighborhood. Then she's crying on CNN talking about, I'm not a bad person. And blah, blah. Yes, it's you like, are. I'm not a racist. I'm not a racist. It's like that I white lady that got her ass whooped in the um in the gas station when she was in a Native American girl's face. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Tell that girl, you need to go back where you came from. She's like, bitch, I'm Native American. You don't want us in the imposter. What are you talking about? And got in that girl's face. She got yeah, rocked. She, yeah, she did get rocked. <laughs> Come it's our own fucking fault. I've never understood a group of people that aren't from here telling other motherfuckers to go back where they came from. You know what's what's funny too is that it's if you like even when you see the videos where the Trump people are like harassing people, they always got the numbers and they're always going go and hit me, hit me. They're always trying to bait you to hit yeah. them. So that and the reason why they're trying to because they don't really want the smoke. I know niggas who I knew I know shooters. 
Right. They don't wait until you hit them first. No. If you really want it, you get. I, I said this to Harry the other. I probably had about thirty to thirty-five street fights in my life, mm. and and they all happened because I punched the dude in the face. Right. Because I didn't give him a choice. So if you really about that smoke, like in all of these all of these situations where there's consequences, and you you, you hate black people, that's fine. But are you willing to risk your residence, your your your, your livelihood, your job, your reputation, your comfort? Are you willing in to it? lose your Ford Focus? I don't you, think are so. Are you ready to? Are you ready? You really ready for that? And also, most, if they if they send you to jail, if you hate niggas, getting sent to jail is the last is place the you want to be. Because <laughs> if you don't famous. think the guards ain't gonna tell them, because people don't realize a lot of the guards in jail are black, yeah. depending on what city you're in. Yeah, so there's yeah. black people in jail. There's black people working at the jail. And yeah. if you get arrested for some racist shit, you're going to be gonna... like, hey, bro, just in case you want to know, <laughs> he's getting locked up for calling somebody they can get to a fist fight at Walmart. Y'all have a nice day. <laughs> Bye. Especially he's already fa he's already famous racist. Right. They, so they already know before he gets there. Know he, um, they, they already own him. So it's, it's crazy. But that's the thing that changes the changes the the the, the culture uh do say you ever dated any white dudes i have associated with the caucasians a time or two associated <laughs> i've had i've had some necessary interactions i would I've, say I've associated with the pink dick once or once or four times i might i might have had a few entanglements she she yeah, answered that would, like yes it was a i might have had a few caucasian entanglements she um, answered that like it was a senate hearing like well i mean i know white people but i don't i have met I've, I too have um we've seen, been in the same room. Right. I've managed I've, seen, I've managed a few white men. I've been know. in the I've been in the locale of a white dick, but I wouldn't <laughs> say that we're close I wouldn't by say that it was something that, um I've seen some pink Priuses, I've seen some pink Cadillacs. <laughs> so you know um Fair enough. So let me ask you this. Did, did you when you when you you date a white dude, what up, killer? Yo, Oh, <laughs> it's the body. <laughs> this nigga's <laughs> light as fuck. <laughs> Hold on, raise your mic up a little if you can, Andre. We could barely hear you, bud. Uh, can you hear me? I'm good. Oh, there you are. Yeah, see, the microphones work oh, when you put them near your face. You showing your mic, go, oh, son. Oh, it's a great mic. You showing your mic. <laughs> I can't hear shit. I know y'all cussing me out. And we I can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you now. <laughs> This nigga Nibble calling it. from a bunker. Oh, Did ISIS take you? Here's if you want to go to the if you want to go to Man School YouTube page, you can see the video of this show because I, I go Andre, nigga. turn your turn your mic up, and all he did was grab it, which was like three feet away, and bring it to his face. I'm like, of, of course. Nibble it in, nigga. <laughs> Uncle Stash, what's happening, baby? <laughs> you I heard that one. Uh, there you go. There you go. I heard Uncle Stash. The rest of that shit, I ain't get. You Yo, you looking, hear me. you looking real, real cocky with that microphone, son. You looking real cocky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like somebody Amazon order just came in. Okay. We <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Dude, Hello, Circuit City microphone. Microphone. <laughs> you microphone. You don't remember Circuit cool. City. Child. There we go. Um, uh, they were asking, asking me about... We're asking um, about white people for... Yeah. If, 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 Dulce, if Dulce has dated white people. I They're white this. people. Uh, and five people. And she said yes. she had a few entanglements. Mm. And, I went, <laughs> and I was like, but here's so you know, I didn't you don't know, but me and me and um Zeus did a uh uh we did a podcast and was lighting the white boys up. A little bit uh DeRo we were doing um DeRosa, DeRosa and, and Fisher's Fisher show. Uh they were doing a live um Podcast election, and you podcast know, you know, something. I go in hard, Dre. But do say took the point guard. <laughs> I, I was like, All right, I'll play power forward, I'm good, I'm gonna back off. And do say was lighting them the fuck up. She had History the hot hand lesson. in this game, she had the hot hand. The hell yeah, she was on fire. I was just telling facts. <laughs> Look, she would say something and then go like this. I just dropped another three on him, another <laughs> three, three, three. So I was I was asking her, being that she's so woke and so uh, like, how is it dating a white dude? Am I woke? Yeah, you woke. This is the thing. I don't know woke 
One, I didn't know black people could be woke. I thought this was first something all, that white Let me say this. That's probably the first time I've ever used the word woke in a sentence. <laughs> and it, did, it, it, felt, it felt it, like you didn't, it, you didn't it want it. Like, it felt like you didn't want it. You could feel um, it, right? I've yeah. never used the word woke in a sentence. Uh, you mm-hmm. ready? Dante so, completely <laughs> chucked that shit out the window. <laughs> this nigga gave up. Hey, hey, wait. Flag on play. Sure, I don't know nothing, okay? <laughs> Um, I I think oh. there's well black woke and white woke is different. I can say that mm. I have dated a couple uh a few white dudes. Um, what were you trying to ask me about them? Was, <laughs> like, just I'm saying, but you are not woke or not. But I mean, look, you you lived a black. You know what it is to be black. Yeah, and, I grew up in Atlanta. I couldn't right. help it. <laughs> and 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 you and, and in your skin. So that's yeah. a whole other thing. It don't even got to be Atlanta, but. So, so at times when I've dated white girls, right? Troublesome. I, well, <laughs> it's there's always a blind spot. No matter okay, was how it, was it awkward when they asked you to <laughs> feel your pubic hair? They're like, "Can I touch it? Can I just touch right? it? What's that Holy. like?" When like? she said my my pubic hair feels like hamburger meat, then I was like, uh, "This might not work out." I don't know. Okay, everyone has curly pubic hair. I think we have to all. Yeah, yeah, but they don't know that. That's what I'm saying. I think pubic hair is just how pubic hair works. Like, I think it just curls. I don't... It's, no, that's, that's actually not, not true. That's not true. Some might be straight. Not when you got a delicious Asian with that slick... Anyway. <laughs> that oh, slick. Okay, that was, there's a problem. Their hair is bone fucking straight. Um, <laughs> I would say it depended on how that dude grew up. Yeah. But because but, but even when they've grown up in a certain way, you know, you know what I'm saying? There's always that blind spot. I mean, there's always blind spots with everything. Like I grow up completely exposed to white culture because I live in America, but I don't know the names, all the bands they be talking about. No, I don't know. No, I don't know. It's too I, many I just, bands. It's too many just, bands. Listen, I just yeah, learned. I just bands. learned that song. Bands. Free. I just learned the name of Freebird. I don't I, I knew the song. And Freebird, but I never knew that they went together. You thought I, the band was, was Freebird for a while, right? Dante for like years. Oh, you've never years. been anywhere where somebody's been yelling, "Play Freebird." Yeah. yeah, but I, but you know what I'm saying. I'm. I I mean, it's to become a cliche, like it, it, the saying, someone yelling "Freebird." Now it's ironic. Is now ironic. Do it ironically. You think about okay. it. There's so many times that you've heard somebody say, or somebody's like, "Play Freebird," and you're like, "I've never heard." Like, I don't think I've heard the song, but maybe one time. But um, it just depends. Like, if you're messing with, like, what I like to call a Tyler, uh, which is just a male crystal. Um, <laughs> what? We all know what a crystal is. Uh, like, so, ditzy? Huh? Like, ditzy or something? No, a crystal is a white girl who's only dated black dudes. She keeps an asymmetrical haircut. Mm. She uh, doesn't have too many rings on. A, she smells that's, pre, that's pre-Karen. Yeah. This that's is pre-Karen. This is, Right. This is your white girl who's always going to come bail you out of jail. She's a little thicker because she's too big for regular white dudes. White but if dudes. she's in the South, she can still pull white dudes. The yeah. Southern white boys like a, a sturdy woman. Mm-hmm. So this is your white girl who's always dated black dudes, always down for black dudes. Um, but she she usually knows what she's been in enough conversations where mm. she knows where the line is. Okay. Right. Like She's gonna, you know, she's not gonna go too hard. She gets it. She's got mixed kids, so she's trying to be about it. Right, um, right, right. Her baby daddy ain't shit, but she don't talk about it all the time. Um, and, she, and she don't turn Travel, your father, you gotta love your father, Travel. She's doing one of those. <laughs> um she never she knows she can't use the N-word, but she's been around for so long where if she did, you'd be like, I mean. Uh, it doesn't have that one. sting to it. It doesn't have the sting. The sting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna give her one because you know she does have three kids. I'm you even you even you even look at it like let me. What was the context? You what know was what the mean? context? <laughs> right. So your Tyler's are the, the cool male white version. Dude. Yeah. Right. Always has a fade. He loves the tall T. Plays ball. Plays ball. <laughs> um. Always has a fade, but bone straight hair. Sometimes might be curly. Mm. Um. He's a white boy that wears cornrows, and you're like ah. All right, sure. <laughs> I don't want to. This is not a fight I want to have. Right. Um, he might sell weed. You're not sure, but he always has weed. Um, <laughs> but it's the same kind, and he always dates this sound, black this women. This sounds like Dulce's pitching a kid show that's based out of Atlanta, <laughs> like yeah. all the characters on like Atlanta Sesame Street. This is, this, but these are the, but, so. There's those white people where it's just like 
you've been around black people long enough. You get you. We've been like, OK, you know, you can't say nigga. We know you can't say nigga. But if you said it one time, you might not catch your ass whooping. Right. In context, like we, the context. What was the context? Like right. you, if you said it arguing, you need to ask for it. Right, but if right, you're like, oh, but you ain't gonna do like, that. He ain't gonna do that anyway. He also, because he if knows he, better. If he says right. it about another white guy and it throws you off, you're like, you're like damn. This, you're like, oh, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky, that's one. A tricky one, right? See that? And then see, the, see the eye she gave. That's as long as he brings that eye, like. Mm. Uh, right, and then there's these other, and then there's what I really appreciate is just it's still, but it's still a culture vulture situation. Like you're still trying to assimilate into us right now is either you that, grew up or, would you, now, would you it, think that or do you think that maybe you were the thing that he was chasing that's what i'm saying it depends on a dude right, because right. if you're if you're a white dude that just grew up in a black area this is what everybody's doing right, right. if you're trying to be this and you grew up in the suburbs and didn't have any black friends that's, that's yeah, a fake so ass weird. situation yeah, so yeah, you yeah. just date so a lot of times your crystals and your tylers will date black people to get closer to blackness, which mm -hmm. I don't appreciate. Um, if you grew up around us and you just grew up around us, and yeah. then there's just the white dude where it's just like, I'm a fucking khaki pants wearing white dude, and mm -hmm. you're pretty, I'm gonna date you, you just happen to be black. Mm -hmm. So the ones that I usually talk to are the ones that are just like, cause I used to mess with some dude who was a fucking surfer in LA, like just a regular mm -hmm. ass dude. Mm. So you're just out here being your regular white self. And you just like, want to talk to me. Like, yeah, whoa. I mean, it, was, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, but whoa. I think I kind of, because sometimes those white dudes that are just like them Tylers, they get too close to blackness and they feel like you should automatically accept them into it. And I'm just like, hey, man, I'm not. I don't know who your sponsor is. I don't know who lets you. <laughs> I don't know who's letting you do all of this. You gotta have three. I, for I, you. Gotta, I don't know none of your recommendations. I don't know none of your recommendations. I don't know I who know, brought you like, into this fraternity. It's got to be difficult because you don't let that go because you're always on guard. I remember I was dating uh, a black girl who, even though she knew I wasn't white, she still thought I was. She would keep asking the me same like, way "I feel. I don't trust yeah. you, nigga." Oh my god, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Don. Ah. Andre. I keep well, see, telling but the it's first been dude, years. But the years, first Andre. dude I ever really talked to or kind of like dated or whatever was from El Salvador. Mm. So, because I grew up in a very Latino community. So that's right. who I grew up with. Mm. So, like, my best friend, his family's my family. They're Mexican. So, like, I grew up with a lot of Latinos. So, that's who I was accustomed to being so around. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, growing up in in around a lot of Latinos, like you're a uh you're a strong black woman. And I right. don't mean, you know, you know, I don't mean that facetiously. Right. Is it is it also that you need that kind of strong dude that makes you feel like a woman, or are you just kind of like you know, kind of taking it as it is. You know, you, you, you am I asking that right? Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, because it's absolutely right. Because right. the thing is, people don't realize that alpha females want alpha males, and big in a big way, like right. big dog style. Because right. you got to meet their energy and then go another half notch up. Yeah, it's, more a, so. it's a running joke between like me and like a couple of my homeboys, where it's like if I'm dating a dude. If he's ready to leave and he goes to me, yo, I'm ready to leave and I don't feel moved to leave. So it's a feeling. I don't need to be moving him because I don't because it's like, yeah, it's only going to be because you date I don't give a fuck food. if this nigga's ready to leave. Because if one of my homeboys says to me, yo, I'm ready to leave. I'm just like, OK, OK, cool. <clears throat> like one of my homeboys, when he's ready to go, I'm ready to go. Mm. But I call him Papa anyway. Yeah, so yeah, Papa yeah. Goes, so I'm ready to leave. Vibe. Yeah, right. So he's like, I'm, he's like, all right, I'm ready. And I'll be like, oh, can I have five more minutes when I finish this conversation? Sure. Mm -hmm. But if he's hungry and he's ready to go, let's go. Let's we go. are leaving. Right, right. I've been in the middle. He's like, I'm ready. I'm like, well, I'll see y'all later. I'm not, but then like, where are y'all? I'm like, no, that's my, that's Papa. That's not, I'm not sleeping with that man. Yeah. But the nigga said he was ready to go, so we leave it. Right. So right. he's hungry. I'm out. And so, so that's a, it's, a, it's a feeling for you then, you say. It's a feeling then because it's just like, like I was engaged to a dude years ago. <clears throat> who was very much a beta male. Very mm. much a beta male. 
And I had to get out of that. Because, I don't want to run a man. I yeah, don't. Well, here's the thing, too. It's so I'm gonna give you the, the background of the, the how to show the you know the podcast is called Man School 202. Right. Um, the whole point of it was that I always say this. I haven't said this in a while, so I'm gonna repeat it now. Anytime there's a relationship and the relationship doesn't work, it's the guy's fault. Interesting. Now, and I'm in my you, experience, that has been true. So go ahead. <laughs> but proceed. In, in, a, in a way, so even if you got, even if you dated some crazy bitch, right? Interesting. The your people, like I said, crazy is only as crazy as you let it. This so, is the thing about crazy. When a dude says to me they're dating a crazy girl, my first question is, was she crazy in the first course, few months that you knew her? Of course she was. Yeah. Of Some of them people, say no. No, that's bullshit. That's hold bullshit. on. Hold on. If a dude says to me, this girl is crazy. My first question is, what did you do? He go, what? And I was like, was she nuts when you met her? Because real crazy don't hide. Real crazy can't No, it hide. doesn't. No, it no. doesn't. But what I mean, is a, is because people... my question is, because I'm always like, well, what'd she do? That's crazy. It was like, well, you know, I was like, I cheated on her. And then I was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> She wasn't crazy. You disrespected her and hurt her. And now she's asking you to be accountable. That doesn't make her crazy. It makes you an asshole. Like stuff would happen with my ex and I would be in the middle of doing, I'm like, oh, this is crazy shit behavior. But it was because the fact that I was in an emotionally abusive relationship. So we were reacting. The beta male. No, no, the no, 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 no. This oh, is different. No, he wouldn't oh. have dared. He wouldn't have, uh, he couldn't have tried it. Yeah. Um, Cause he did try to shut it down. So, but this dude, no, this is another, now this is now this, more on an equal emotional level yeah, yeah, yeah. on that. No, he wasn't a beta male, but I was in the middle of an emotionally abusive relationship. Right. But we were stuck in a cycle where he would do something fucked up and I would do something fucked up. And it got to the point that if he did something fucked up and I didn't react, he would freak out. Mm. And be like, why didn't you do what you always do? And I was like, because I was finally fucking listening to you. Mm -hmm. So he used to do this thing where he would ignore me. I think that's completely disrespectful, right? Right, right. And so, but he would ignore me on stuff that had nothing to do with me. If he was having a hard time with his family or money or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. I had numerous conversations with him like, yo, just tell me. You don't even have to say what's wrong. Just go, it's not you or it is you. Or just go, right. it's not you. Give me a heads up so I'm not. Just right. give me a fucking heads up so I'm not acting like a crazy person. So he would do that shit, do that, and I'm like, fine, nigga. You want to fucking ignore me? Let's see how that works. So I would show up at the nigga's job. Yeah, I knew everybody that worked <laughs> at his job. And he used to fix my car. But I would show up, I would either roll up, and I wouldn't come through the front or whatever. I'd go to the back because he worked at our dealership. Uh -huh. Everybody knew me there because yeah. I met him through our jobs. Right. So I just rolled up to the bay door. Call me. Hey, I'm not loud. I don't have to do anything. Right, just show I don't up. have to make noise. All I got to do is just pull up. So let me or, ask you that's, some, that's some Sicilian mob style intimidation. <laughs> you or, just show up holding a fish in your hand. Right. Or I would show up to the house. Now, he knows the only reason I started doing this is because he said the thing that makes him the most mad is when somebody pops up on him unannounced. Right? So you're going to so he gave you the so, key. He gave, you the keys he, gave to the me the keys, he gave me the keys to the fucking kingdom. And he <laughs> knew what upset me the most was somebody fucking ignoring me. Right, because right. it's disrespectful and rude. Especially if you ever had your penis inside my vagina or burn your fucking house down. So the big irony do is that one, you guys were communicating with each other somehow, but you only somehow. listened to the evil details. <laughs> right. Well, but I also knew what his favorite foods were. He couldn't give a fuck. So like, I'm ignoring you and I'm showing up. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, yo, you guys are definitely communicating. I mean, we you heard both that get it. much. A therapist so, would say, like, good news is you're communicating. The bad news <laughs> is you're passive aggressively trying to kill yourselves. Right. And so there was one time where he pulled the shit. And this is probably fucking two, three years of me knowing him. <clears throat> he did this shit again. And so I didn't show. No, this wasn't even a year into me knowing him. This was like, maybe, oh, you didn't show up. I didn't show up. I didn't show up. And he called me. So he called so, me like a few weeks later. He hits me up. He's like, what's up? And I was like, hello. And he asked me to come over. Sure. 
And I get to the house. We're sitting there hanging out. He goes, hey, why don't you pop up on me? What do you mean? And that's well, when usually, you stabbed him in the eye with an ice pick. <laughs> no, nah, 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 nah. I ain't gonna do all of that. And then he said, I love you. <laughs> no, he's never, he's only said in this, me and him went back and forth from 2007 to 2015. I can count the number of times he Damn. said he loved me. Mm. And it was on one hand. So, but I was like, but he was like, why didn't you pop up? I was like, what? He's like, why didn't you pop up? And I was like, because I was listening. Mm. You made it clear that you didn't want to talk to me and you didn't want to see me. So... And then the relationship started to go to shit. Oh, it was already too it was done. shit. It was already done. Well, you know what's what's in, But this was year two of knowing him. I'd already yeah. done other shit. He pulled yeah. some slick shit with me. I had his name saved in my phone by his occupation. <laughs> and then if he called me, it was a voice recording of me going, this is a do not answer number calling you. Mm. So one day he said something disrespectful to me. And I went and I went, I left his house crying and got to my car and I was like, wait a second. I'm gonna go home and be upset. This nigga's been a good good night's sleep. That's not gonna happen. So I went back to the house, he let me in, we sat down, and I said, Hey, call my phone. He said, What? I said, Call my phone. He calls my phone and he hears the voice of me going, This is a do not answer number calling you. And I said, What's my caller ID say? He said, My job. And I said, Oh, he's like, Why? I said, You know why? None of my friends know what your name is. All they know is you by this. Have a nice night. I went the fuck home. God damn. That's so some, let, that's some military it. general strategy yeah, of dropping a in. dirty bomb and moving on. <laughs> but guess what? I still kept talking to the nigga. Hmm. This was year one so of no, let me, let me 2007 ask you this. Why? to 2015. Why? 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 Why was, did, you, did you come from kind of a toxic family life where you were kind hmm. of looking for that? So this was just something that you got accustomed to. It was me not thinking when I met him, I was 23. He was 25. He had his own house and two cars. Mm. And mm. I grew up very Southern. And I went to a very Southern and very conservative college. And I went to a Southern conservative women's college. What meaning? I don't understand what you mean. Meaning by that. that this is the motherfucker you marry. Oh, okay. He's 25. Okay. He's got his own house and two cars. Yeah. You trap this man. At 25, she's already an old maid at that point. In, no, in he the was South, like. no, he was 25. I'm 23. Right. He, yeah. you. He's saying he's saying you got to get it done before 25. That's yeah. I'm, I got. I preferably would get it done at least before 30. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> yeah, but because remember, mind you, I was engaged. I met him 2006. No, I met him January of 2007. I was engaged in the year before I knew him. I was just engaged here before, something like a year or two before. Oh, so, to somebody else, to somebody else, to the beta dude. Okay. So, and that wasn't a good situation. Me and that dude met in February. No, me and that dude met in November. We were working together. Got engaged on Valentine's Day. November to Valentine's Day. That's not enough time to know somebody. Mm. And so, a month after we got engaged, I broke off the engagement, and then a month after that, I broke up with. I broke up our relationship. Right. Because I started to know more things about him, and I was like, "Oh, oh." So like, my kids would have been ugly, and that you, was. How, un- <laughs> how do you? How do you get to? Okay, so y- you have these kind of you. You have these norms that okay, this this is the guy you married. He's got like a business and two cars and a house. Mm-hmm. You have these things that are built into you. You you're in this kind of toxic situation. Well, let me let me back up. One mm-hmm. of the reasons why I was said that always. It's always the guy's fault when the relation. It's because no matter wh- how crazy she is or not crazy or whatever, if you're not, if if you like, for instance, you said that feeling that you have when the dude is ready to go, it's a feeling. You can't tell a a a a, 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 a alpha woman to be weak to be less alpha. Like you mm-hmm. can't, t- you can't, you can't, you know, like you hear your girlfriends will say, oh, girl, he's a nice guy. Give him a chance. You might as well. If that's the whole thing with that's sharks dating penguins. You the shark. Ha! It's only a matter of time till you taste penguin and, and bite his head off. So you, you, you can only the, the podcast's focus was to make guys more confident, to make 
better better versions of men or make or have men understand that being the best version of themselves is where the confidence comes you can't tell a, a strong woman to be weaker she's she's just never going to respect this guy because she but knows the dude i was engaged to was very weak and i wanted no parts of it right. um because he, I was making all the, I mean, I'm only fresh out of college. I'm making all the decisions, you know, all this other, there's so many other things that are wrong, you know, at home and all, it, his life and all this other shit. And my kids would have been ugly. So I was like, I gotta get out of this. But like with him, when it comes to just me being the type of person that I am, it's like, like I was over at his house one time, he had a bunch of his friends there and, um, I got up to get him. I was getting to get getting up to get something to drink. So I asked him if he wanted something to drink. And then I asked his friends if they wanted something to drink. Right. And I'm going to the kitchen and I hear his homeboy say, yo, how you get her to do that? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, my girl don't get up. She don't ask my homeboys if they want anything. He said, that's just how she is. I can't make her. I don't make her do that. Right. Like when he was like when the economy, like when the fucking when the recession hit in 08, he went from making, you know. Now this is the this not the this not the beta dude. This the other dude. No, this is the mechanic dude. So right, okay. Um, and so he, now, did you do that to the beta dude? Like, if he had his friends with you, like everybody is—is is that just the southern thing, or were you like? I mean, eh. I, he lived at his mother's house, so I couldn't do any of that. That lady uh, was mad anytime time I was in her fucking kitchen. Uh, okay. Um, which is also some real old school southern shit, but like. You know, when he... The beta dude, was he black or white out of curiosity? He was black. He was black. Most of my long-term relationships have been black because, like, one of my best relationships that... I mean, just to finish, like, wrapping up with him, it's just, like, you know, I was very... He he lied to me a lot because I would want to go out. He would say yes in my presence. And then when we weren't around each other, the story would change. And eventually we got to the point where it was just like, well, I really didn't like, if you didn't want to do it in the first place, if you had no intention of doing it, you should have just told me no in person instead of not dealing with my emotions at the time. Cause now you got me mad because you lied to me as opposed to I'm not mad. He's like, well, we can, I was like, it's not about going out. It's that you lied. Mm. You have a fuck about going to a movie with your monkey ass. It's not the point. You lied to me. And so, I mean, and he's married now to some girl who's built like a can of soup, but it's it was never a good relationship because he he wanted total control. I just wanted him to tell me the truth and respect me to a certain point. But he didn't want to do that because he wanted things to go only his way. And the only reason we went back and forth for so long is because he lived 12 minutes from my house, 15 minutes if I hit them two lights. So we worked at one point. We worked down the street from each other. We lived on the street for each other, and we did love each other. Mm. But it just not ended up being not good. The best relationship I ever had was this dude, um, who I met when I was out with a girl I was friends with. He was working the security. Uh, Mexican restaurants in Atlanta and around Atlanta have a tendency to have like nightclub nights. Mm. So he was working the door at one of those places, and I met him. And um, he's six four. His nickname was Baby Shug. Uh, he gone to jail. He was gone to jail for seven years. He's the best so my, boyfriend I've had in my life. I feel like what? I know that guy. I don't know why. Uh, but I feel like I feel like I met was, him. <laughs> but he was a to- he was a sweetheart. That he was. You know, you know what those, that comes from. That, that I think comes it's being from, in jail for seven years. Well, not just that. It's it's also it. There's a there's a certain level of confidence that you have when you're not worried about people taking advantage of you. Like yeah. even on a physical basis, like when you're physically imposing, you, you can, you can be in your own skin and be comfortable with it because you're not really like, if you're a little, a little motherfucker running around like a little squirrel, like who, who's going to get me? Who's throwing rocks? Who, yeah. like, you know, still, what's that noise? You know, when you get a big, you get a big thing that's been in jail and you know, Getting, been punched in the face, punched a couple motherfuckers in the face, and yeah. you go, yo, I'm, yo, I'm good, like, cause we could always turn that on. And like, he I never, know, and and that was the but, thing is like, little thing niggas is, always want to fight. Yeah. Big niggas never want a problem. Yeah, it's, it's, because big it, niggas, cause it's easy to flip the switch. We could right. do that all day. I don't want to do. I can't. Can I get some apple pie. I want some apple pie. Now like, the I thing wanna, with him, 
But the thing with him was, you know, he he was on probation at the time when I met him. And you know, we Harry, were this, out of there's some black shit right now, Harry. This is mm. some black shit. <laughs> So, I mean, just hey, hold on. Let's not act like I don't know. Plenty of people have been on probation. <laughs> Other people have been on probation. I mean, so he went to jail. You know, he my w- side. I got a brother right now who's just uh, who might Another, be going but back. You are, in. you are a crazy Armenian. So nobody's That's worse true. than you, motherfuckers. That's true. It, not it, my it, brother. My brother's good. You bastard. I uh, <laughs> mean, I'm afraid too hard. The but, Rus- Russians are afraid of Armenians. <laughs> really? Yeah. And when I'll, they, I'll, it's zero. Yeah. It's feast or famine with Armenians. There's just nothing in between. It's, yeah, it's all crazy, crazy like them Serbian not. cats because the like, Serbian. Yeah, yeah, like Albanians, like yeah, they could like that. It's all them. There's a reason a lot Yo, of them niggas, are in the I UFC. I don't know what happened when the Iron Curtain fell, but them, them niggas are them niggas wild. Is K, they straight KGB with no job. Like you, they you hopped in, out in the track in the, suits, ready to fuck <laughs> everybody up. Dog. You in the you in the KGB, and then all of a sudden you ain't got no job and nowhere to take your skills. You can't work at the AT and T store. You something's gonna happen. And then you so, got kids now, and you're like, oh, them kids yeah. got to be nuts too. Yeah. They yeah. the only motherfuckers who have old men accents at 23. Like, who? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> you don't know nothing about, that. about these Eastern European cats. No, these niggas are wild, dog. Personally, I <laughs> think it's all the chemicals they from are the cologne. The niggas, if they I had are to the pick niggas of Europe. I'm yeah. telling you right now. A lot, like, lot, like, lot, of, lot of acrylic sweaters. A lot of yes. acrylic sweaters. They love slacks. a track suit. They love uh, <laughs> track suits, sneakers. And Cosby girls sweaters for some name. reason. The yeah, thing is, the girls and them girls fight like men, dog. Yeah, yeah. These bitches stole hands. But you gotta say, they've been working in fields for thousands of years. Like, Listen, we, you know you, you know it was like that when I was a kid? Hmm. Yo, don't even think. A Haitian girls? <sighs> I'm from Miami. Don't fuck with them girls. Haitian girls would fuck dudes up. Them are Jamaican girls. Don't fuck both with them. Both titties shit. out. Both titties just throwing. Mm, 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 mm. One of the holding and swinging. Oh, that was. You, I remember and, girls because them girls in Miami would take their shirts off before they would fight. Like grown ass men. No, yeah. no, no lie. <laughs> them bitches would scrap. But I'm like, uh, you don't want to still- get your ass kicked by somebody who just removed their blouse. That is not a good look. When I was, you know how in elementary school, girls grow up bigger than quick, faster. Yeah. So, man, them Haitian girls, nobody wanted to fight them. Dudes didn't want to fight them Haitian girls. Until, until like, maybe, like, high school when, you know, your manliness starts kicking in. But when you all, you know, that like, when the girls grow bigger, like, in fourth grade or fifth grade. middle school and shit. Oh, them Haitian girls. But then the thing is, but then them girls get to high school and they're gorgeous like a foot like this like because yeah. they'd be fi- they'd be pretty and all of a sudden you're like this bitch is beautiful please yeah. stop throwing your hands you're so yeah. pretty yeah. stop fighting that boy he's on the yeah. football team leave him be you're gorgeous <laughs> don't let that nigga fuck up your face yeah he's yeah. a center back um but this dude was but and he had his moments where like he asked me one day he was like how come you don't ever sick me on nobody i was like what are you talking about <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a, a point right he did it Cause like I remember I was at a show one time. And this was like I was probably like a uh, maybe like two years, year and a half, two like two years of doing stand up. So like starting to do like you know more paid shows. And we were on some show in Atlanta. And there was a DJ nigga, and the dude kept hugging me. And I'm like, but it was like he was hugging me and holding on to me. And I'm like, hey man, you gotta get off me, dog. Like you need to chill. He was like, oh, you cool, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, no nigga, I'm not cool. Get off me, dog. And so he was like, ah, you just being, and I was like, no, I'm not being too much. You need to back up. Thank you. And so he finally got out of my face. Cause I just was like, nigga, it'd be me. You, you have to stop. You're making me uncomfortable. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just drunk. La, 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 la. And so when, you know, I get off stage and he's standing there and he's like, you need me to talk to him. I was like, no, no, no. I don't want you to talk how you talk. No. Yeah. I don't want you to talk how you talk because when yeah. you talk, it, cause like the thing is he works as a repo man and he worked at a fast food restaurant and he was a bouncer at a club. Yeah. So he was in always, Atlanta fast food restaurant. You get like, no, this is in Athens. That. This nigga works in the country. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so this is country niggas, right? That's where you could get straight razor. Right. And so, <laughs> and then with him, you know, his family, you know, he came from a family you, you, and gang. Yeah. You know what it is, too? It's it's also like my sisters used to do that. 
and then I it would get like but my 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 middle sister she she would have like she she was not really close so we never and then she had this situation where this dude she was dating um the dude was like um she says he was stalking her right oh that's so happening he, so, so now but here it, you gotta you don't know my sister so um so she the was nigga's she, dead wrong period no nah, you don't you don't know my sister trust me let me when i finish okay. this you're gonna hear so she i said look um so the dude was got out of jail ex-con put together a little cleaning business and he was cleaning the staten island ferries so he had a little office legitimate business right huh. so um the nigga also, she also told me the nigga had the penis pump, the one where you, the, the like Austin the, Powers <laughs> penis like pump, the, the Swedish no, penis no, pump. No, 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 the 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 imp, the implant, the one where you pump. It oh. used to be a, you grab your ball and you pump it up like the um like, like a, Ewans, like, like a Reebok uh, uh, sneaker. Yeah, pump. like Reebok. They had oh, yeah, a, you could get they a, had a in, thing yeah. where it was built in, and you I had mean, like no, a I've little. I've never heard of this. A little, <laughs> they had like a little, like a a pressure pouch right and you and you get the erection right so anyway but this thing was a he was a thug like he was a thug they would stay penitentiary that's you some know, robocock was, shit right stick there sticking motherfuckers up and shit like that a thug with a robo dick oh, well, he got man. shot he got shot he got shot couldn't get it like clothes in the in the lat and he get well something to, that affected the dick probably yeah There's so a lot of okay stuff. hit him in the crotch area that's just rude you could hit so that I, man in the so stomach. I tell my sister I was like look you know you you go back and forth with this motherfucker all the time you you want me to talk to him yes I want you I was like look you you know you sure? how this, are you sure you want yeah. me to talk to him I said because it ain't gonna be it ain't gonna be good right she goes I want you to talk to him now. I'm going in knowing he's a con. I know he got a he, he definitely got a ratchet on him or it's close by. Right. So I, I go to the office and I walk in. I walk in. The, the girl says, so you went you to talk. his job. I went to his job. Walk his way. His his receptions like you can't go in there. Busting the door. He's in there. La, 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 right. I see sitting on the desk. I just smack this nigga in the mouth. Pow! Right? I throw him over the desk. I jump over the desk. I put my knee in his stick and I'm choking this nigga, right? What the fuck? I was like, yo, leave my fucking sister alone. You understand me? He was like, but I love her. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm and I'm like, nigga, I don't give a fuck. Stop loving her. And stop buying her roses, right? Okay. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, why am I? This nigga Why am I here? He's Stop in love with her. Picking her out right? to dinner every night. Stop treating her nice and buying her red roses. Like, what the fuck? But this is what I'm saying is my sister's right. So, um, I go back. I go, look. It's done, right? So my sister, we, we I, I like, I didn't see her. So all of a sudden, my sister's calling me around Thanksgiving. This happens maybe June, July, August. My sister's calling me. She, we don't see. We don't talk. We ain't close. She's calling me. She's calling my mom at the time. Was like, you know, your sister calling you. She keeps saying she's trying to get in contact. I'm like, I ain't talking to that bitch. Whatever, right? Finally, my I go to my mom. I go, yo, what? What's up? She go, oh, she's back with him. Cool, 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 cool. She's back with the dude. Right. Now, in fact, this was right before Thanksgiving. So, and he's coming to Thanksgiving dinner. Wow. He wants to know if I'm okay, okay with bringing this nigga. And I was like, why? I go, why would you Why would you put me in that position and then you back with this because motherfucker here's, again? Here's the difference between her and Dulce. Y your sister has no respect for exactly. the consequences stuff. Because what the stories that Dulce is saying, like she told the guy, no, 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 I don't need you to talk to him because she knows what the fallout is going to be. And she knows that it's not going to be worth that for her no, or for I anyone told, involved. Because yeah. I told him I can handle it. Right. When I, I can't can, handle it, I'm going to let you know. Exactly. Then I'm going to let you handle it. Also, uh, exactly. the nigga was on probation. I don't need him going back to jail because right, the nigga was too much. Even but, if he wasn't on probation, now he's in this mix for this. Right. It, it don't but, even make no sense. But what I can say also about your sister. 
You let me tell you something. You can say whatever you want hold to say up, about hold up, hold up. that there's bitch. Not, there's not gonna be anything that you can say. There will be no blowback about what that. You might not have thought about is sometimes you need a nigga to know I can send somebody over here. She's not that smart. Oh, fair no. enough. Fair enough. But she's not that smart. It's just, it's, it's so. I can get tell you, it's, it's so reckless. Just Damn, so reckless. Because you, you know? want to, cause like honestly, what one of the heart is like, cause you want to know just as a person, you got backup. I got know? it. I got like, look, my younger sister would would go some shit would go, and she, I would hear about it, and I was like, yo, you need me to handle, it? and she would be like, no, no, I, I got it. Now when she called me. She knew what it was. Even, right. a, I, yo, did remember the, the uh, Dawn? Dawn, the, this chick I used to date. She, she, big old Instagram booty, right? Little ass, just like, ri like ridiculous. Stop the, sh would stop the sh people would stop in the street and follow her home. Snowing Not out. as fun as you think it is. Well, I, it was for me. The um, <laughs> the, so, so I mean, some you got to understand, Dante's a man with his own face on his Jeep, so it's a little <laughs> bit different for Dante than it is for everybody else. I the, mean, as someone who has been followed home, it's not always great. Oh, right, right, right. So the the these dudes try to talk to her. They couldn't talk to her. She she put her headphones on, kept her head. They threw snowballs at her, mm -hmm. right? So she comes in, <laughs> she's crying. She's like, they were throwing snowballs on me because I went and talk. Right? So I start lacing the boots up. I'm going up the block, right? Yeah. My mom, my mom is in the house. My mom goes, she goes, no to me. No, don't go. I don't want you to go. So my mom says, look, if you didn't want him to go, you should have wiped them tears outside the door. Don't come. Like, this is, my mom was like, this is happening. Don't this come in here with that. This is going down. You came in with tears. This right here is happening. Dante he'll, doesn't he'll, do catch and release. Like, <laughs> Dante, yeah. yeah. Dante I mean, there was stuff hunter. that niggas had said to me. Like, I knew that there was times where, like, you know, I'd had some nigga in Atlanta who was saying ridiculous shit to me, another comic who, you have, you know, of course, has quit and is not successful. Mm. Um, But, <laughs> I mean, just a little shade is fine. Mm, but... There were times I was talking to my homegirl and I was just like, yo, this nigga got one more time to say something to me and I will have a nigga from Athens here and, and please let me, please let me call him. Please let me call him. But there's, because there's plenty of times where people just keep trying you and trying you and trying you and trying you, sure, and trying sure, you sure. to the point but where you're disrespectful. But to not, but to not know, um, to not, you, you have to know the consequence when you put somebody on somebody. Look, you, you're, you know, I, I I personally think about the times that I that my my freedom, you know, I was younger, but that mm -hmm. my freedom was on the line. Right. Because, you know, and, and even the dude at the Staten Island Ferry, the dude was a the, the dude was an ex con. He had a business. He I knew he was packing. It's like you go in that situation, you got to be ready to go in that situation and ready for the consequences that come. Right. And and so if you were a chick that doesn't respect the what the power that she has to point it out, like my mom, my mom was like, listen, you don't want him going out. You make sure he asks you if everything's all right. If it ain't that bad, you protect him. You protect his freedom because that's what's at, that's what's at stake. But, but some that, chicks like to see their man jumping on people. Sure, but sure. that's just but it's like you have to understand if you keep you have a fucking pit bull in your hands. If that's the kind of dude you're with, you have a fucking pit bull in your hand. Right. You can't keep sicking this man on people. No, One, no. somebody's he's gonna hurting put him down. people. And somebody's gonna put him down. Eventually. Somebody's gonna put him down, or you're gonna get him locked up. The you are responsible because you are because you know. Yeah. That he cares about you enough to put his personal freedom at risk, yeah. then you are responsible for your actions in reference to him. The problem quit sticking is, this nigga on people. The problem yeah. is some girls are using that as validation, so they feel love because that man he'll, is protecting he'll do this them. For me. He'll do this for me, but they're completely disregarding. 
the consequences but you, but and the problems you, that will but follow. But some dudes also use that as a way to show love. Some Absolutely. dudes always want to be Absolutely. in a nigga's yeah. face. Absolutely. Talking about, oh, you talking to my girl? You talking to my girl? I was like, he was taking her order. Bro, Why yeah. are you in this way in your face? What is wrong with you? What you said, Absolutely. Dre? Some niggas could just not do that. You got to be wiser. If you can yeah. see that you getting so-called sicked on somebody for the third time this week, you got to stop and go, Rrr. Maybe I shouldn't ah! just be beating people. Like, have a fucking moment of using yeah, your but damn you can't, brain. Everybody don't necessarily think like that. It 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 it's, it becomes it becomes cyclical of the way that they do things. Like you know, we don't do We won't name the name the name, but we were talking about that the other day. Yeah, uh, a particular individual to just so toxic doesn't yeah. have the doesn't even have the ability to be to perceive that this is that they're so parasitic. In terms of Todd Lynn, I thought he died. Yeah, well, he's dead. Several but, years uh, ago. <laughs> but oh, oh, oh. It, you know, you got everybody don't have that that insight, that self awareness to know that. And when you have two people that are uh, that are on a fundamental level, um, both toxic. Yeah. Neither one of them are present. They're just feeding off of that energy. And even though that energy is 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 it feels good because it's exciting and it's up and down and it feels powerful and then weak. And then, you know, it's like a roller coaster. but, but you, you, you gotta, you gotta have the maturity to go. This, this can't, this is unsustainable. I'm not somebody that likes, right. It's not sustainable. Cause I would dated a dude in college who, you know, if we'd be talking for a while and hear from him, be like, yo nigga, what's up? Like, what do you, cause he was like breadcrumbing me where he give me a little bit, just enough. And I'm just like, Yo, nigga, what's the deal? I could be talking to somebody else. What do you want? What's happening right now? Yeah. And so he hit me back and he was just like, oh, yeah, I saw that you was upset. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I should have to. I asked someone, I was like, how come whenever I get annoyed or upset, that's when you react to stuff? And he was like, well, you know, you, you being real angry like that just shows me that, you know, you, you care. And I was like, how the fuck did you grow up? He was like, what do you mean? I said, that's not a healthy way to have a relationship. Well, you say, what would you say your I can't hear you, Dante. Are you are you are you petty? Like what's what's your thing <laughs> that you have to work on? Like, what is the thing that you go that you know when you you fucking up? Um, I think the time that I rolled in that nigga's house and told him that my Come on, I, she told multiple stories of pettiness. <laughs> and you're gonna be like, no, 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 no. That was just with that one nigga was showing up unannounced. <laughs> And you know, and telling you the nigga, the, uh, that person later on quit, <laughs> failed, successful. <laughs> <Not like a month. laughs> Listen, well, that we all know a bunch of motherfuckers that we're happy that we found hey, out they dropped off. I'm not off. saying she's wrong. I'm okay. saying Listen, Dante not paying point. attention. <laughs> just putting, put, making a point. Fair yeah. I was just delivering the news as it should be. <laughs> I was just giving you backstory and context. Accurate information, yes. Right, that yeah. a bitch nigga that wasn't going to never have a career was fucking with your girl. Fast. I thought I was gonna have to put stick my nigga on him, but put come to find out, it. the Lord took care of it. <laughs> Jesus. So, and I'm sure he's somewhere living a mediocre fucking life, but that's none of my business. <laughs> I, that's none of my concern. I think, I think sometimes it's you got a red I box have. Subscription. <laughs> What'd you say? I said you got a red box subscription. <laughs> Ain't nobody mm -hmm, cool with a red box, nigga. No, this nigga's <laughs> out here, you know, with a VCR and shit, trying to make bootleg <laughs> tapes. Like, nigga, don't nobody even. He's out here trying to sell his mixtape on CDs. Like, nigga, I don't know about have CD player no more. Calm down. Um, but, like, you know, I've been in relationship. Like, I had a dude that we broke up, and he started following me around. He showed up at my homeboy's house at 3 in the fucking morning. Like, I've had situations where... Because I'm not a cop caller, regardless. I'm not a fucking well, cop caller. Well, you know caller. what? Here's the crazy thing. I was just talking to somebody about that today. And because I was talking to some white girl, and she was talking about how she admires white black girls so much because they're just so strong. Um, and I said that I said black women in general don't call the cops for the most because you know that motherfucker could die. You but also the cops, cops could kill me. That right. girl well, who yeah, had a restraining yeah. order on her yeah. boyfriend, the nigga showed up at her house. She shot a gun into the air and they're going to give her 50 fucking years for yeah. shooting a gun in the fucking air to protect herself because this nigga wouldn't follow a restraining order. So not yeah. only could me calling the fucking cops get this nigga fucked up, it could get yeah. me fucked up. But yeah. after the third time you show up to my house, after you show up to my homeboy's house in the middle of the night, I was yeah, at Papa's house. You gotta make after a call. You, 
Not that you follow me to fucking two different shows in the same night after I've seen you punch a fucking wall and act fucking ignorant. My mother had to talk to you to tell you to stop coming from my house. I'm calling DeKalb County. Get the fuck off my property. You you got you beat me to my house when I was coming here's, home. Here's what's crazy: the simple fact that black women in general have to put filter that through through their their own living experience of the of how black people are treated in law enforcement, even for her own safety. Yes, she has to create create for her own safety. I'm not gonna call the cops. I'm I, I'm not snitching on this nigga because I don't really because what are they gonna do but lock another black dude up or destroy his life and so the pressure of all of that being on you as a black man was just talk about this today it's like you have no idea I mean there's sexual assaults plenty of sexual assaults that happened that because it was a famous black dude and assisted him I mean don't get me wrong there's scally bitches that got you know that the on the setup but a lot of sisters I know this Cuba good and shit I know a chick I used to date that wait what did Cuba Gooding do you do where have I been did this oh just happen oh. don't 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 hit Google don't hit really? Google you're come out? snow dogs nah this was a while this has been going on this was going on before COVID when he was telling somebody to suck that baby's dick in the club he, I, he I oh I did hear him do some fugazi. Nah, but he had a bunch of he had a bunch of baby's dick. Suck that baby's dick. <laughs> Why was he like doing that? that? I, I didn't even know. <laughs> I know he he had a bunch of sexual assault charges. He he got caught up in some Me Too shit. Uh oh. And Honestly, know, the whole time I know time a chick that he finger popped on the like force finger popped her on the dance floor. So you know, like, she, but she was like, ah, you know, I didn't. Boom, boom, you know, like, bah, 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 and just so if he was doing it, because here's the thing when a dude does that, it ain't one, you don't just have one. It's like, it's like kid fuckers. You don't just fuck one. It's like potato chips. You gotta just keep eating. They, what a they, wild they, statement. The kid, the kid, <laughs> but the kid, that was R. Kelly's is, legal defense, wasn't it? <laughs> well, the potato chips. Yeah, they were like, you can't. can't just have one, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, you, they just played the Lay's commercial. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, the Pringles a. commercial. No, it's, yeah, like, they can just, just do wild shit, and it's just like, you like, wanna, when you see, when you see all of this shit, and it's just like, because when the Me Too shit came out, I said Me Too because I have been assaulted. Of course. But as, because honestly, I don't know a single woman who hasn't been. Right. And so for me, I get annoyed because it's just like we spend all of this money on fucking you've got self-defense classes and pepper spray and tasers and batons and shit I put on my keys and all this and all these different things that I have to learn to protect myself as a woman. But when a woman comes out and says that she was assaulted, everybody acts like she's fucking lying. But then why is there mace, pepper spray, shit on my keys, yeah. all this other shit? So instead of saying, so the whole time it's always set up to foreign women, don't be in this situation. Don't be here. Don't be here. When people don't realize a lot, a majority of the time, if a woman is assaulted, it's somebody she knows. It's right. not somebody Absolutely. sneaking out of the fucking bushes. Absolutely. Don't say, hold it's on. We're going we're gonna to break. How do you want to do this, Harry? We're going to break and then just continue. What do you want to do, Harry? Yeah, we'll continue. Just uh, We're going to continue over at Patreon, everybody. Uh, we're going to close this one out, and uh, you can join us. But let's do plugs over here on the regular show. On the... Yeah, Dulce, what do you want to plug, babe? Um, when does this come out? Uh, probably next week. Probably next Tuesday. Okay, so on November 13th, it'll be before then? Yes, yes okay. yeah, it should be before um, then. On November 13th, I have a movie I'm in called Chick Fight that's coming out uh, in theaters. Yeah. And, uh, Where can you see in, that? In theaters and on demand. Okay. So There's me, Malin Ackerman, Fortune Femster, uh, Bella Thorne, and Alec Baldwin. Um, oh. And then I have a uh, podcast that Andre and Dante need to do called that black ass show. Yeah, let's do it. Whatever, uh, you let me know. Definitely. Where you talk about uh, black TV shows or plays. Um, mm -hmm. So me and Baron Vaughn talked about uh, Robert Townsend. Me and Miss Pat talked about the movie Life. Mm -hmm. So, and then I got the cartoon called The Great North that's coming out in February. On Fox. Right, congrats, so, babe. Congrats. Dope. Just working. Dre, talk to me. Yo, uh, Andre D. Thompson on everything. <laughs> Everything. Um, you gonna talk into the microphone so we can hear you? Andre D. Thompson. Later, mm -hmm. everybody. 
Okay. All right. All right. Good to see love, you, man. Love you all. <laughs> all right. Have a good day. All right. Everything good with you. Uh, Harry, do you want to uh, talk? You can go to my website, IHateComedy.com. That's where all my... Are you my... leaving? Is this nigga really going? Yeah, I got to go to Staten Island. I got a show. He got a show. Oh, Jesus. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, it's came Staten late, Island. left early. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I suck. I'm sorry. <laughs> When you Thank go to Staten Island, drive past, drive past Big Ange's mural and say what's up for me. I got you. Rest in peace, Big Ange. Rest and also, peace, if, you, if you could run over some of those uh, Trump 2020 signs, there's plenty of them out there in Staten <laughs> Island. You could just turn the wheel slightly to the right and slam through them. That would <laughs> be really knock helpful. Knock a few down. Yeah, yeah, just for fun. They're going to try to keep them out there for a while, but don't let them. Um, yeah, again, uh, at Harry Turjanian is all my social media. Uh, and also check out the YouTube page for this channel and also uh, Man School 202 and the Instagram page, Real Man School 202. There's a lot of good stuff. We need more followers and stuff. And of course, the Patreon where we're going to continue over here. We're going to have a little bit of bonus time with Dulce and uh, we're going to talk to, uh, just more stuff, more, more, more technique, more junk. You could, over, you could join us over at Patreon, patreon.com slash Man School 202. We appreciate each and every one of you who uh, supports us. It's really amazing that you guys have our backs like that. You guys and girls. Yeah. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. We are out or we'll be on the Patreon side. So sign up for that if y'all want to get the bonus. How you want to do this? You want to One second. Just give me one Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by... Harry Turjanian, executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.